In parts one, two, and three, we discuss the energy storing compound of the free fatty acid, how we incorporate that into our body and utilize that, store it for future use. In this section, we're going to discuss how we utilize that particular molecule. But before we continue, I have to introduce the other major energy storing molecule, the carbohydrate represented here by the glucose molecule. And you'll see that the glucose molecule is made up of the same basic three elements. It has a carbon backbone, which is organized into this hexagon. One of the carbons is actually substituted for an oxygen in the hexagon. And the remaining carbons and hydrogens and oxygens kind of dangle off of that hexagonal base. Carbohydrates are also made by plants through the process of photosynthesis, another energy storing compound. In our bodies, the carbohydrates and the fats provide energy at a different rate. Fats are a high concentration of energy. One gram of fat will provide nine kilocalories of energy, whereas one gram of carbohydrates will provide four kilocalories of energy, less than half of what the fat stores. However, carbohydrates are a readily usable source of energy. It can be used almost immediately in the form that it comes into our body, whereas fats have to be processed, broken down from the triglycerides, and transported into the cells for energy use. So based on the previous discussion, we can see that obesity is the result of bringing in more calories than we actually need. And we're storing the excess in our fat cells. To lose that weight, we have to take in, of course, less than what we actually burn. And we'll start mobilizing that energy from the fat cells and burn it in the muscle cells. But this is a slow and steady process. My patients get disappointed because they don't eat for a day. And at the end of that day, they weigh themselves and they haven't lost an ounce. That's not the way our bodies work. The free fatty acids are going to be used up in the cells two carbons at a time. Once you've depleted that free fatty acid, then the body signals the fat cells to release more of that energy to the muscles. And it has to be drawn out of the fat cells and pushed back into the muscle cells after it's broken down into its usable form of a free fatty acid. And that process takes time. So being a little bit hungry is not a bad thing. Your body's trying to tell you, go ahead and eat because I don't want to use these reserves. And if you eat, then the body doesn't have have to dip into those reserves. If you allow yourself to be a little bit hungry, you will mobilize those fat stores and use them for energy consumption. So how do we utilize that energy or those fat stores that we've put away in our adipose tissue? To answer that question, we have to understand what in the body actually uses fat. For instance, the brain. The brain cannot use the fatty molecule as an energy source. The free fatty acid is too big to pass through the blood-brain barrier. The brain is obligated to glucose and it requires a lot of it to maintain function. That's why patients who have a drop in their blood sugar or a low glucose level, that will manifest as CNS or central nervous system problems. They'll start off with a headache, they'll become irritable, eventually they can become confused and if it gets bad enough, they can actually have seizures. And we treat that with an immediate infusion of glucose right into the vein and within a minute or two, the patient normalizes. However, the heart and our skeletal muscle are hardworking organs. They basically have to maintain our movements and pump the blood through our body and require a lot of energy to do all that work. They prefer to use the fatty acid. As we said previously, there's a lot of energy in fat and the muscles prefer to use that as their primary energy source. But there is a caveat. As we said previously, fat is difficult to mobilize. It's not very readily available. It has to be brought out of the fat cells. The triglycerides are broken down into the free fatty acids. The free fatty acids are then pushed into the muscle cell and the muscle cells utilize those carbon bonds, two carbons at a time, as an energy source. And once they use that up, they have to signal back to the fat cells to 
send out more energy and that has to be processed. So in times of high demand, the heart muscle and the skeletal muscle can actually convert from their preferred fatty acid metabolism to a glucose metabolism. And I'm going to demonstrate that with this graph right here. On the y-axis, we have calories per hour, how many calories per hour we're going to burn. On the x-axis, it's the percent of your maximum heart rate. And we can get a quick estimate of your maximum heart rate by 220 minus your age. So if you're 40 years old, your estimated maximum heart rate would be about 180. So looking at the graph, at 60% of your maximum heart rate, you're going to burn about 145 kilocalories per hour from fats. From carbohydrates, you'll burn about 85 kilocalories per hour for a total of 230 kilocalories per hour. The breakdown is 63% fat, 37% carbohydrates. Moving on to 70% of your maximum heart rate, you're going to burn about 190 kilocalories per hour from fat and 198 kilocalories per hour from carbohydrates for a total of 388 kilocalories. As you see, as we do more work, you're going to, of course, burn more calories. So the total number of calories does go up. The split is almost 50-50, 49% from fat, 51% from carbohydrates. Now at 75%, look what happens. 160 kilocalories per hour from fat, it drops down, and we go up on the carbohydrates, 250 kilocalories per hour for a total of 4 10, increase in the total number of calories utilized. This split is 39% fat, 61% carbohydrate, going on to 80% of your maximum heart rate. 155 kilocalories from fat, 315 from carbohydrates for a total of 470. The breakdown is 33% from fat, 67% from carbohydrates, and more dramatic at 85%, fat, 60 kilocalories per hour, Carbohydrate goes up to 440 kilocalories per hour for a total of 500 kilocalories per hour. 12% of the energy coming from fat, 88% coming from carbohydrates. So you'll see the maximum fat burn is going to be around 70%. And that's why when you go to the gym and you get on this aerobic equipment, you'll see this little chart on there that monitors your heart rate. And the lower heart rates at around 70% will be labeled weight loss or fat burn because that is the level that's going to maximally utilize your fat store. So if you're looking to burn this fat, you don't want to be at your maximum heart rate. You want to be somewhere around 70%. If you map out your weight, the first couple of days that you start a diet and decrease your amount of intake, you may not lose anything. And then on about the third or fourth day, you'll dip down three or four pounds. That's the mobilization of the fat out of the fat cells. Again, you'll go about three or four days and then drop another couple of pounds. And you can plot this out on the websites like fitday.com, www.fitday.com that allows you to measure your caloric intake. And if you want to lose weight, they give you recommendations on what you should eat and how much you should eat. And you can map your daily weight. Patients that have utilized this site can, after time, predict exactly what day they're going to lose weight. They can say, I'm going to fast, I'm going to maintain this program, and on the third or fourth day, I can lose a couple of pounds. And you'll see, over time, if you stick with the program, you will, in fact, lose weight.